I'm Justin Keith. I'm Chase Ladenbach. And this is how we created the world's largest streetcar drag racing series. All right, you, you, want, you want us to tell them how we met the first time? Because actually, you're wrong. How am I wrong? We met at 1320 Video Cash Days up in Omaha. Ah, we did. That's right. 2000, yeah. was it 2012, 2011? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I was out there with 1320 Video, just like helping and watching and stuff like that. And that's where I met him. That's right. You came up with yeah. your with Silver Streak, that Yeah, body. my yeah. O2 Camaro. Yeah. So we kind of met there, kind of became friends through that. And then we went to a racing event in Texas where I had my car. And at the time, I was actually working for 1320 Video. Yeah. Um, so I was doing a bunch of the merch booth stuff, um, helping coordinate different things for the company, stuff like that. And I was also at this event racing too. So it was kind of one of like the, the old, old days, like when 1320 Video was still super small. It was nothing like it was today. Yeah. And it was just really starting to take off. Like we were there right at the beginning point of when things really blew up for 1320 Video. So it was a really cool time to be involved with that. From there, we went home. I kept thinking like we were just coming off this like huge high of like how much fun we had got to hang out with all of our friends, things like that. And so I started bugging Kyle about Kyle, like, why don't we, like we go to all these events all over the country and we cover them. I was like, we see the ins and outs, like why don't we do our own? Like we could not only cover them, but we could throw the races. And I was like, dude, we could call it 1320 video invades whatever city. Um, so the, the conversation about how Streetcar Takeover started actually kind of really started there. Um, so we got home, Justin was doing your car show, right? In Kansas City? Yeah. In yeah. Kansas City. What was that? It was like, at the time it was like, I think it was like KC2K or something. Yeah. It was something crazy. Like said, we're like, all coming off the high of like yeah. the heyday of what, yeah. you know, Texas was. So, um, we were down there came home, talked to Kyle about everything. And he was like, well, we're gonna go out of Kansas City and cover Justin's event. Um, so we'll, we'll go down there all as a crew again and we'll talk about stuff. So we finished up Kansas City, had a blast. Um, that weekend, like we blew it out. I mean, the host hotel was <laughs> packed. There was people freaking everywhere. There was Side cops, pockets. cops from like, four like four or five surrounding cities got called yeah. in because it was just so crazy. I mean, it was like the streetcar scene just took over Kansas City. Once again, 1320 video invades whatever city we went to. We really did invade the city. Like it was nuts. Yeah. home again super excited about it got home Sunday I called Justin Monday morning and at the time I was doing insurance sales um, I was a really really high up for the companies that I, that I sold for um, and I just I wasn't happy doing that I mean it was a great job I was like the number three writing agent in the entire country um, at the time so like, it was a great paying job loved it stable it was cool but I kept having all this fun whenever we would be out on the road, like the shenanigans we get into with the crew and like meeting all the new people. It was great. And so I called Justin. I was like, dude, what if we just do this? Like, what if we just do it? And he thought I was crazy. I did. 
So, because he had a good job too. I mean, you worked at your job for what, 10 years? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was about, yeah, like eight years or nine years going into that. Yeah. And, you know, I worked 60 hours a week. So I'm like, you know, like screen owners, hey, uh, boss, I'm gonna take off like an extra four or five weekends a year. I hope that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember you were worried about asking him because like yeah. you didn't want to lose your job. And I was a private contractor, so I could yeah. pretty much do whatever I want. I was 100% commissioned. So if I didn't sell anything, I just didn't make any money. But you know, if I could get my work done, I could go play. So I found myself like working super hard the first three days of the week and then focusing on Streetcar Takeover and getting it started. So I guess where Streetcar Takeover really happened was after that phone call to Justin, I called Kyle. And originally this whole deal was gonna be the three of us. Yeah. Um, and I remember you came up to Omaha to go to dinner with Kyle and I, ironically at one of our biggest sponsors restaurants now, yeah. um, which is Twin Peaks where we still work with them today. But at the time we weren't working with them. We just liked to go there. Chase really loved Twin Peaks. I really liked it. I it's, liked it too. Yeah, it's a good place. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, we were sitting in the back room and we we're going over all these plans, like trying to figure out like what cities we were going to go to and what we were going to do. And the more and more and more we kept talking about it, I kind of noticed that Kyle just kept like, he just kept getting quieter and quieter. And I looked at Kyle, I was like, what do you think? And he goes, man, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if I want to run events, but I'll cover them. And I was like, all right, cool. So I looked at Justin, I was like, well, I still think we should do this. And uh, we started brainstorming ideas and uh, the name Streetcar Takeover was born. At that meeting. Yeah, at that meeting at Twin Peaks. So um, that's where Streetcar Takeover actually got its start. And that was at the very, very tail end of 2013. And we had our first season in 2014. Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah this mm -hmm. happened right afterwards. So 2014, yeah. And uh, here we are today. So this is going to be our 10th anniversary season coming up this next year. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I just want to remind you we're in our second week of our GTR giveaway and we're doing two times entries right now through April 15th. You can win this car, which is 650 wheel horsepower, $15,000, comes on ADV1 wheels, and it comes with a complete Street Shine car care package and a 1320 video edition draggy. All you gotta do is head over to 1320video.com. Every dollar you spend is two entries now through April 15th. But we never really thought it would get to the point that quickly, you know, like we went from four events in 14 to really in 2015, it went up to like 10 events that year. Well, yeah, because like the first year, we just tried a bunch of different things. Yeah. So like we tried this in Oklahoma City and then we tried this in Indianapolis and we tried this in Houston. And roll racing wasn't even a thing with our events back then. We didn't it wasn't start. a thing for any event. No one yeah, did roll true. racing. We yeah. were the first ones Yeah, to we were the first racing. one to try it like at a drag strip. The drag strip thought we were crazy. Yeah, in Oklahoma City. Yeah, Nick. The no, Nick. it was uh, Topeka. Remember, we tried it in Topeka for the first time and then That's we actually right. did it in we OKC. We actually did it in OKC. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were planning on going to OKC next and we didn't know if it was going to work or yeah. not. So we yeah. tried it out and uh, Nick Duty, the track manager in Oklahoma City, my home track, Thunder Valley, um, he thought we were nuts, man. He's yeah. like, you guys want to do what on the track? And I was like, well, you know, like rolling start races, like roll racing, because, you know, it kind of simulates like what guys do on the highway, because there's a whole demographic of streetcar guys that, you know, they love to, to drag race and dig race. And then there's a whole bunch of guys over here um, you know, like stock driveline cars that make power to the moon that don't want to dig race. So we kind of came up with a plan to capture both crowds and put it into one spot. And it first happened in OKC after we tried it in Topeka. So yeah. that first, that, that first OKC event, boy. Yeah. Remember was, how rough yeah, that oh, was? It was bad. Yeah, it was really bad. We're so. like, we kept like checking. We're like, uh, the track manager kept coming up to us, Nick. And he's like, well, he's like, uh, we're gonna have to like change some things because like guys, there was there was nobody there. there I mean, yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. We, we had there. like for drag race, and there was a decent amount of racers that showed up on the Saturday, but Sunday, yeah, we tried. We didn't know it. if we needed one yeah. or two days. We just didn't know at the time. Yeah. And like Sunday, I'm like, well, I guess we're gonna be racing each other today. Yeah, like, right. What are we gonna be doing? Yeah. So it, it was a little rough. It was rough, but you know, it's stuff like that that really helped us. You know, really quick. 
learn yeah. what worked and what didn't like super how fast. to schedule things where to do things where and how to do it yeah yeah and then it's crazy because now we're like we worked on that one schedule for so long now the events are just growing so much that we have to like go back and, and like restructure things yeah yeah and uh yeah, it's, it's just crazy. A lot of people don't understand, like, if you're at the track, like, you're getting, they're, you're paying for the rental for that whole day. It don't matter if you have 10 people show up or 30,000 people. Oh, bro, You're yeah. still paying that one rental. Yeah, if you open the gates, yeah. you owe that money, brother. Yeah. It's, it's a stressful thing, especially when you're first, like, new, and you're the new guy on the block. No one's really heard of the event. Like, people knew who Justin and I were because of what we had done in the streetcar scene before streetcar takeover happened. But no one knew us as like event promoters. Like no. we're brand new at this. I didn't know much. I knew streetcars, roll racing and stuff like that. And yeah. now, I mean, I feel like I know what I'm doing a little bit maybe. Yeah, maybe a little <laughs> bit. All right, so 2014 happened, it went off. And then, you know, like we did, what was it? Four events in 2014, but in 2015, Wild stuff. we kind of took things a little bit more serious. Uh, you know, it, here we are, we're at the beginning of the year. It's our second year. I'm still working full time at my job. He's still working full time at his job. Yeah. And uh, we Man, start adding events. Me. Like, yeah. you know, people are coming like, oh, come to St. Louis. Oh, come to, uh, where else do we go? Uh, um, some new Orlando. spots. Orlando. Orlando, yeah. Orlando. So we start calling tracks. Well, tracks are starting to know about us because of really 13, 20 videos coverage. Oh over yeah, everything. 100%, yeah. So, you know, it was cool because we were calling these tracks and like, oh yeah, I've heard of you guys. Yeah, we'd you know, like to do an event for you. And so we'd go there and- it Made us feel like we were doing something. Yeah, and I believe it was our first event in St. Louis um, was like whenever we were like, okay, we have something here. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that too. We actually, we actually made money. Yeah, we did. Which we had never made money, yeah. except for selling not, our merchandise yeah, not at like the real events. money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, really, I'm telling you, like, if you go back on like our social medias and stuff like that and like look at those years, you know, like I had a Viper at the time. Justin had a Corvette C7. So those cars were from our jobs, like our previous lives in the professional world. Yeah. And then, you know, he was still working full time. I was kind of working full time at that point. I was starting, since I had a little bit more freedom than him, um, I was starting to kind of fade away from my real job and focus on streetcar takeover. My parents thought I was nuts, first off. Like they thought I was absolutely crazy to do this. Like, it's never gonna work. Like, what are you doing? My family says. And then St. Louis happened. <laughs> and my parents happened to be at that event. And yeah. my dad got it at that point. Yeah. He was like, all right, like this is like this is a like this is a real thing. Like you guys can do this. But even then, man, being young, starting these events, getting away from our professional jobs where we were making really decent money. Um, and starting into streetcar takeover and stuff like that, man, it was some cold winters when we first started, man. Like it was rough. Uh, we were literally selling sponsorships yeah. to live. Like I'm not even joking you. Like we were selling event sponsorships to pay our bills at that point. Like it was nuts, man. Um, there yeah. was a lot that went to into To get us this. through winter. Yeah, to get us through winter so we could focus on putting the next season together but at the same time, like, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, we were, we were putting our own money and stuff like we're, we're All buying our merch, you know, we're, yeah, you know, our, our trucks, you know, the travel, like we were just spending all of our own money that we would normally just be yeah. spending to like go at, you know, race other events, but we were using it on our own yeah. at this point. And I remember Dave Vassar with Nitrous Out, he was like our first, our first guy sponsor, that yeah. like believed in us yeah. and actually gave us like decent amount of money for yeah. sponsorship and when chase called me i'm like nitro salad no way like yeah those guys are awesome i was like we're like, doing it yeah. like it and was, then and cool, then pro yeah. charger was too pro yeah. charger was pro one of our first too. sponsors yeah. that believed in us believed in what we were doing yeah. and those companies we still work with today and it's cool because like they were with us from the ground up yeah and uh that takes a lot you know to be a company and just say yeah guys here's 15 grand yeah. Here's 15 grand to these two kids that yeah. 
put on these no events with record. all their merch in the bed of a pickup <laughs> yeah. truck and and roll from event to yeah. event so it was pretty cool to to have people like that believe in you especially from bigger companies like that yeah basically like after 2015 man we went all in on this deal um all in i quit my job um failure was just it was not an option you know looking back on it i wouldn't change it but at the time it was scary you know i went from you know making you know six figures a year to yeah. Uh, maybe make money this month to pay my bills and my rent and my car payment or uh, have the, the repo guy knocking on my door in July. Yeah. And that's pretty much what happened. I mean, I, I'll say it right now. I mean, I mean, I had freaking banks call me like I was 60 days late on my car payment and truck payments. And, you know, like basically if I didn't make my payment that day, like they were going to, you know, call a repo guy to come get my stuff the next day. Like that's how bad it got yeah like but I said, when i said it was cold winters man the winters got kind of cold they it, really did we fought through it yeah and i mean it sucks and not a lot of people would be able to to work through that i mean yeah. i almost gave up several times but it's just it's one of those deals where it's just part of growing something like this and yeah you know looking back it was just you know some some hard stepping stones we had yeah it was but it was super fun at the same time so yeah. i think that's what kept us going and I think, uh, fast forward a little bit, I think going into 2018 was like really the first year where like, I feel like everything really came together yeah. and we had some massive turnouts and it was one of those deals. Like, I still remember I made a post that said, man, I feel like we did it. Like we're here to stay. Street car takeover is a thing. We're not going anywhere. And I think one of the biggest moments for me, um, to kind of like cement that into my mind was when we did our first Charlotte, North Carolina event. Yeah. We have a group of guys in uh, North Carolina, Dalton, Trevor, Wes, all them boys. You remember they came, yeah. they started. They were the ones that our, wanted us to go. They came yeah, to our Nashville our event. Our Nashville event, like, our you first guys need to come year. to Charlotte. We're like, what? Yeah. We're like, Charlotte, North Carolina. Why would we go to Charlotte, North Carolina? Like, yeah. we don't even know anybody out there. I don't even own a NASCAR. Why yeah. would I go there like, to race? We just thought like, that it was just roundy round racing and that was it. <laughs> and so they convinced us to call Z-Max for wide track. Uh, my jaw hit the floor when I heard how much the four wide track was to rent. Um, Turns out it's about four times as much as a normal track. <laughs> if, if not a little more, <laughs> yeah. um, like it's, it's expensive, yeah. brother. We had 500 racers, I think our first year. It was something crazy. It was insane. Yeah. Like 15,000 spectators there. And the problem with Z-Max is man, once again, it's one of those tracks where if you open the gates, like if, if you open the gates, you are you're in like yeah. you have to pay the rental at that point so good bad or indifferent you are on the hook and, and keep in mind guys we didn't have pre-registers back then so no, we didn't know what was had showing up. no clue what was coming no clue like you yeah. want to talk about not sleeping the night before <laughs> something yeah. i did not sleep like it was one of those deals where i was literally laying in bed checking my phone every five minutes to see if it was time to go like it was horrid i night. slept really well because if it went bad i was just gonna leave chase in charlotte and just drive back here oh, <laughs> that's fair okay um but uh yeah so we ended up having like thirteen thousand spectators i don't know something. it was it 13, was 13 15 like yeah. it was it was nuts like craziest thing i've ever seen yeah probably one of the best days of my life because it like really showed us like man we're doing this and uh really cool experience we so. looked like we looked like a bunch of idiots out there though because yeah. like we didn't know we, were not ready we didn't for know that. we didn't know there's 500 <laughs> racers show up yeah. show up the track didn't know there was going to be 500 no. racers show up and it took forever to get in it took forever to do anything we the lanes were just a cluster like we legit just did not know how to take that many racers at once yeah and you know we heard about all the nice friendly comments after yeah. the event on facebook and we do read those yeah we do and you know it kind of it was kind of discouraging a little bit but you know you fast forward to the next year and they all came back and we yeah, were a lot everyone more, came we back. were a lot more and prepared. more <laughs> yeah and more and we were a lot better prepared for it and honestly still like with every like event that just is our biggest one our biggest one we learn from that every single time and we try to come back the next year with a better game plan yeah, yeah. our first year in Bandemir, which is in denver colorado i mean 
shit show, guys. It was it shit was, show. It was so bad. <laughs> Once again, we didn't know that that many people were no, coming. No, we had no clue. <laughs> but even even Curtis, you know, the, the, you know that owns a shop with me yeah. now, I met him at Streetcar Takeover yeah. Denver. Yeah. And he goes, the first few you guys were there, the guy was, it was a shit show, man. Yeah, everyone was mad, blah, blah, blah. But he's like, the next year you guys came back, it was the smoothest event I think we went to all year. Well, I think one of the biggest problems with that event was that like our staff, who has a certain way of running things, yeah. and their staff, who like, Bandemir is a very hands-on track. It's literally one of the best facilities you go it to. Yeah. They have one of the best trained staffs at any drag strip I've ever seen. Like they actually like full time have a person for this position. Yep. Most drag strips have like a part time guy that sometimes does this and sometimes does that. Basically labor ready. Yeah. Employees. <laughs> and Bandemir is like, no, we got a guy for this. We got a guy for this. And we were just fighting each other the whole entire weekend. And actually got to the point where even though our turnout was great, um, Sporty, John Bandemir, great friend of ours now. Yeah. Okay? In fact, I, I had a, a situation come up the other week and he's one of the people that I call now when I have a situation for like a race or something like that and I need somebody that's like deep connected. I call Sporty, I actually do. Um, but he came to us after the event happened. He goes, guys, great turnout. I don't know if we're doing this again next year. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And I was like, Huh? Because, like I said, this is like one of the first years where we're actually starting to get a real turnout yeah. and make real revenue and actually be able to function as a company and as like a real job. Like, you know, real yeah. incomes, real, we could pay our people real money and stuff like that. So I was like hearing that one of your biggest events, we might not be able to do this next year. <laughs> I was just like, uh, what? And he's like, I think we should regroup if you guys are going to pri yeah we'll sit down we'll have a discussion that. about it at pri and it was one of those deals where okay our event happened in july pri is in december and i remember that time it was basically half a year you know five yeah. months yeah and sitting there like i would literally be laying in bed at night thinking about man i hope we can do denver next year and actually be wor i was worried about it but uh it turns out our friend Wes Buck at Drag Illustrated, you know, yeah. was good friends with Sporty at the Thank time. You, Wes. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Wes. And and Wes, you know, kind of, you know, gave us some some good words to Sporty. Yeah, like he did. talked yeah. about talked good about us that we were doing good things. And Sporty listened. He did. And uh, we ended up meeting Sporty at the PRI show that year, and it was fine. Yeah. Remember, we were so we were so, so worried about yeah about the meeting. Yeah. And we talked for like five minutes, and Sporty goes. All right. Yeah. He's like, well, let me know. Uh, give, you know, give me a we'll call. We'll put this together. This year. And, yeah. Uh, we'll do an event. There. And we're all like, oh, I was like, I, okay. What? <laughs> I was like, I literally worried about this for five, six months. And it was over in three minutes. Yeah, it really was. was. fine. Let's, let's talk about 2020. We all oh, know what happened in 2020. Man. Yeah. You want to talk about nuclear meltdown on the <laughs> business, brother. Like, 20, yeah. I think I called Justin. And I was like, brother, we're gonna lose everything. Like, it, this is not good. We literally make our living off of large groups of people getting together. Like, I was in full-fledged freakout mode. We had tracks calling us left and right saying, hey, you know, we're not gonna be able to do it this year. What do you guys wanna do? And I was like, well, what do you mean? What do, what do we wanna do? Like, we can't have the event. What's there to yeah. do? And that was really, really scary to us. So what Justin and I kind of did um, was we just started finding places that would let us do it, to be quite frank with everybody. Uh, we were in full-fledged, like, I just had my first kid. Mm -hmm. uh, Kinley was like five months old. And I'm like a new dad freaking out because I feel like I just lost my job. And I don't know what to do. And so we started trying to find places where that were more lenient on things so we could still have events, obviously do them correctly. Yeah. And we did, yeah. um, but we got to do this. And I remember calling the local track in Oklahoma city, my home track. I was like, Nick, like that's the track manager. He runs the whole place. I was like, Nick, like, what are we going to do? And those first initial two weeks when like the whole world 
like legitimately stopped. Like everybody for like the first two weeks um, scared me to death. And Oklahoma City then all of a sudden was like, well, after two weeks, like we're gonna get back at it, you know? And the, the track was like, you know, the hard open point is as soon as these two days are, or two weeks are up and pretty much most of the country still decided to stay shut down after that and Oklahoma City just went into full, like we're ripping. And so I called Justin and I was like, brother, like we have a shot here to throw an event. Let's do it. And we opened up the track the day after the shutdown stopped, the day after. And so it, it was kind of a thrown together deal. It was. I mean, we like what, how many, how, like threw it together in like what, a week and a half or so? It was something really quick. Yeah, it was quick. And man, we blew that place out. Like people were coming from all over the country. Like it, it was amazing. Like had a massive turnout. And that kind of, that kind of, you know, gave me a little sliver of hope. But then as soon as the event was over, we got back into trying to plan some more things and everybody just kept turning us away again. And it was one of those deals too, where, you know, when, when all that stuff happened uh, and everything just kind of shut down, you know, we were like, oh, a month, you know, a month yeah. time. No one knew that it was gonna be, you know, one, two years oh, of just man. stuff. So we're like, oh, you know, our, our Charlotte event in June will be fine, yeah. you know. Once we get into, once we get past May, mid May, we'll be we'll be set. And so we really weren't worried. But then like things just kept okay, dragging on, dragging on. Then dragging I, on. then you know May came around. We did that event. I'm like, ee, it's not looking good for like our Charlotte event though because you know they have a lot of you know restrictions and everything. So we started to have to uh, to plan things a little differently. You know yeah. we're like let's replace Charlotte with another Oklahoma City event because, well, we can race there. And we were calling way down the line and even tracks that we were calling, they're like, oh yeah, we'll be fine by then. Oh, it will be like, open by then. Yeah, it's not worry. No, we'll just keep the date open. And then, you know, you get about a month out from that event and then you'd call them like, well, we don't know if we can have an event or no. not. And you try to promote an event that you don't know that you're it having in a month. Happen. So we did it's, all this work for nothing. We spent so much money on advertising <laughs> yeah. that just pff, just Gone. faded in the thin air because it meant nothing. Yeah. That year, and I mean, so all in all, about Vandermeer. Oh, going back to Vandermeer. Yeah, we have to talk about Vandermeer. So you know, Colorado was one of those states where it had like really, really strict, like you can't do this, you can't do that, don't breathe, type of deals. And all the boys over at Bandamere are very much, well, they're like us, USA, USA. Don't tell me what to do, you know? Yeah. And it was one of those deals where there was a whole bunch of gray areas. Like if you really looked at all the stuff that they were trying to do, there was a bunch of gray areas. And so the track had continued to do stuff even though the health departments and stuff like that were saying, well, maybe don't do that. Well, don't tell us what to do, you know? It got to that kind of situation. And it was one of those deals where the health department actually ended up pursuing the track legally two weeks before we had our event there. They slapped them, the event, and everybody involved with like an injunction, basically saying that like, hey, if you do this, you're gonna be in big trouble. And the track took the position along with us that no, we are gonna do this and we're not gonna be in trouble because America. Yeah, well, it was just <laughs> laws, laws that protect you yeah. know, stuff like that, and and they were right. Yeah. But you know, as, as everyone knows, during that time, it didn't really matter. I mean, if if they wanted to shut you down, they would shut you down. Yeah. And uh, and that was scary. Honestly. Oh, it was, that was scary. A, that was the scariest part about the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those deals where we were literally watching the court case happen on Thurs Four, Thursday. Forty-eight hours before. Yeah, on Thursday, the event was supposed to start on Friday evening and I was sitting in Oklahoma City on my kit in my kitchen once again pacing back and forth <laughs> watching this court case happen and the judge was like you know I think that there's just too much going into this I'm not going to make a ruling until after the weekend so up until now Bandemir is open and you guys can conduct business regularly is what the judge said and as long as they do the as long as we follow the precautions follow which we the, did yeah, yeah we exactly did. exactly yeah. I remember Sporty calling me and he goes, so are we doing this? And I was like, brother, yeah. I'm still in Oklahoma City because like I didn't have any faith 
And I go, yeah, let's do it. And I remember going to Vandermeer, man, we had news crews out there in front of the front gates and it was, it was a big spectacle, but it went it off and it was safe and everybody had a great time. So I think we kind of proved that even in those times, being outdoors, following the right precautions, you can still do this stuff safely. Like you can. We had 18 scheduled events that year, and I think we ended up doing 15 of them. Yeah, we actually got our season off pretty dang well. 2021 came around, and you know we we knew it was going to be you know a decently busy year. You know everyone was back out. You know a lot of the the, the stuff from 2020 was you know kind of fading out. Yeah. People are getting back out. You know we started off you know decent turnouts at our events, and then came was it Charlotte? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think like pretty much if you were a car enthusiast in Charlotte at that time, uh, you were at area. Street Car Takeover. It was nuts. Uh, One it was, of the books. It was packed. Yeah. 2020 showed us like, all right, this is what is going to happen at every city we go to if we have a big turnout. Yeah. And so now we implemented that in 2022 and, you know, we're prepared at some of our bigger events. Yeah. I think like the only events that we really got kind of off like kind of uh, off track a little bit was like Dallas because of the rain delay. Oh, and it was so dang cold. It was man. cold. Oh. We didn't like. We couldn't finish because the track got so cold that like it was yeah. literally too, it, was, it wasn't safe. None of the racers pre-registered like literally the day of like I would say a third of the racers showed up that day and registered. So like we didn't know who was coming. Had no clue. And we thought it was going to be a small event and it turned out to be a decent size event for racers. Like yeah. spectators, not so much just because it was what 45 degrees for a high that was the and high, windy yeah. and windy <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know it's like you know once again we'll take what happened and then we'll implement it and come back to dallas like next year a lot more prepared yeah better day and then you know some some things that that we've learned over the years and things that we're changing especially going forward is you know we're, we're gonna get to the point well we are starting this year we're having racers pre-register now you can't just show up and buy a tech card and race. Yeah. We're, we're beyond that. And and it's be, it's so we can host a better event for people. You yeah. know, if, if we know how many cars are coming, we know how to schedule things. Like, yeah. oh, we got this many roll racers coming? Oh, well, we're gonna start roll racing earlier. Yeah. Or, oh, we, we only have this many roll racers coming? Oh, shoot, well then we'll end roll racing at this time and we'll start drag racing at this time because we have a lot more drag racers. We're changing our events up slowly but we're gonna start adding more stuff that benefit the racers. So like, you know, we're gonna start having like VIP uh, tents with like catered food in there, stuff for our vendors to come and hang out so that way you're not waiting in long lines if you're racing yeah. uh, for, to get food or lunch. We're gonna start uh, implementing, you know, more uh, all around car stuff, like more drifting, more, more burnout contests, you know. Oh yeah. Trying to trying to make that spectator that comes to our events have more things to do than just watch cars go down the drag strip. So like next year, you know, we have an invite only event coming next year. Um, some of the baddest dudes on the planet will be there um, from roll racing, but then also drag racing. Um, there's going to be good payouts. The events, um, the the event trophies hmm. are going to be freaking really cool. I cannot wait to show you guys what the trophies are because it is going to be sweet. I want one. Yeah, I want one too, so I'm probably just gonna have to make me one. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Our participation awards. Yeah, they're right. On they're there. they're really freaking cool. We're 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 just trying to find different ways. You know, we understand. You know, as as event promoters, you can only do one thing for so long before yeah. it just kind of the 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 flame starts to dim a little bit. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people watching this video. You're like wondering why we don't go to St. Louis anymore. Well, St. Louis started out as one of our bigger events we did. Yeah. But it just seemed like every single year that it would get smaller and smaller and smaller and shoot for a while. Chase thought it was something that we were doing. Yeah. And it turns out it's not. Uh, all the events at that particular place were just going down, 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 yeah. down. And that's something that's so important. Like for anybody out there listening, for car guys especially, like you guys have to support the things that you love to do. A yeah. bunch of guys wonder why their tracks are closing down it's because the spectators aren't showing up and that's the problem. So that's a lot of reasons why those tracks are shutting down now because people just don't support the tracks. Yeah. And uh, you got to support it, man. You got to support the sport or else it will go away. Um, and I think that's, 
even more real than it ever has before with all the, the changes with, you know, electric cars and the environment stuff and all that stuff. It's, it's becoming one of those deals where this really could be the last generation of doing the things that we love. Yeah. So we need to support what we can and do what we can um, to keep this sport alive and growing.